Yo, what's going on, family? Um, coming at y'all again, man, with another video. This is the part two to the one I just made. Um, man, the information just keep coming. Like every time I'm closing out a video, you know, I'm running into more information that I feel I just gotta bring out to the people, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, like, as I be saying, man, I be discovering some of this stuff like while I'm presenting it to y'all, man. Especially in the last video, you know, it was some crazy dropping up, but um. So I just want to uh, hit y'all with this, this part two, and hopefully this, this right here, you know, put a lot of things into perspective, you know, and a lot of things together. So without further ado, let's get in. All right, I want to start off by um by reading this comment right here, man, from the brother Winter for Hoku. Um, what's going on, my brother, man? Shout, shout to you, bro. Uh, this man always come with some of the most interesting perspectives, man. Like the way this man be thinking. I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? He just really, really be coming with some interesting information and um, some things that'll make you think and go, you know, like, hmm. But so anyway, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, if you didn't catch part one, you might want to do that. But um, so this is what the brother say, man. He say, Hathar is Hagar, okay, and Horus is Ishmael. The Muslim crescent moon and star is a womb, moon, and the child a star. Now think about that now. You know what I'm saying? I know it sounds crazy at first, but I'm going to show you how on point the brother really is. You know what I'm saying? Because think about it. He say Hathor is Hagar, right? And Horus is Ishmael. So Horus, the sun god, he referring to Ishmael. Now, the the Muslim crescent moon and star is a symbol of the womb, the moon, for the mother, right? And then the child, the star. But we know stars are what? Suns, right? Suns are stars. Okay? Now, when you look at... Um, let me see, let me see. Hold on one second. Oh, here you go. Now, look at the, uh, the Islamic symbol. Right? You got the moon... And you got the star, right? Or or sun. But the sun or star is inside the moon, right? So it's almost housed in the moon. The same way um Horus or Heru would be housed in Hathor, right? It's her name Het Heru, meaning house of Horus. Alright, so I'm gonna read you know the comments. So you say Hathor is Hagar and Horus is Ishmael. The Muslim crescent moon and star is a womb, moon, and child, star, all right? He said, cows go moo. Moo is vulture. That's why she is also a sky god. Nice teacher, preach. I said, bro, that's real now because in the wilderness, she called on El Roy or Ra. Bro, you always have some of the most interesting perspectives. I say, exactly, bro. The cow go moo. That sound is for the mother, mama, ma, moo. Hence why she is called mother goddess and cow goddess, right? Man, that's crazy, bro. So, he come back, he say, Yeah, the Moors called this place Mu, and the Egyptian Mut or Mut, silent T, uh, Mu, it means mother, which is a vulture, Hathor, Hagar, bloodthirsty. The symbol on Hathor's head is actually the moon, bro. All right? It's the Egyptian symbol for moon and is also used for the first day of the month. It also deals with women's menstrual cycle uh, time of the month. Remember uh, on this movie Suicide Squad or DC Comics, the Enchantress with the same moon symbol? It represents the sun going down even at nighttime. All right. Now, like he say up here, Hathar is Hagar. The Muslim crescent moon and star is a womb, the moon, the wombs, the fertility, the mother goddess, right? Moon, and then the child, the star, the sun, the sun goddess, right? Okay, because remember in the last video they say what? The sun god is the male part and he is the counterpart, you know, to the mother goddess, right? So, you know, it's a dualistic thing. Which is why her symbol probably would be the moon. You feel what I'm saying? If the sun god symbol is the sun. Alright, let's, let's keep going. Okay. 
um yeah thanks bro okay this uh check out this comment right here he say it's islam at its core bro hathor pregnant with horus and hagar pregnant with ishmael hagar was made too was made great too she was made raw though feel me um but seems like beef jealousy between hagar and sarah over abraham the inheritance goes to isaac feel me it's beef over the land that's why arabic muslims think it's their land lol i say bro what boy you on point you feel what i'm saying because um first of all you know check out winner for hokum um his, his his uh his channel and he got a video right it's like a four-part series or a three-part series right called the city of abraham found abraham so big rock so big right right so he's building this connection between um abraham and so now that's crazy because remember this this uh article we've been building in when you when you when you're doing your research on on her thought look what it say scroll down i remember catching this it said Hathor became seen as the wife of Sobek, who is considered to be an aspect of Amun-Ra. Yet Sobek was associated with Seth, the enemy of Horus. Okay, now, hey, check that out though. He said Hathor is the wife of Sobek. The brother was making a a Abraham and Sobek religion. I mean, uh, excuse me, a uh, connection. <laughs> so to say, you know what I'm saying? What he said in the comments. You know, it kind of make you think. You say Hathor pregnant with Horus, and Hagar pregnant with Ishmael. Uh, Hagar was made great too. She was made raw though. Feel me? But it seems like beef, jealousy between Hagar and Sarah over Abraham. The inheritance goes to Isaac. You feel me? It's beef over the land. So he's saying, you know, Abraham, Hagar, where Ishmael comes from. Bam. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So that's why. And like he say, it's beef over the land. That's why all Muslim Arabic think is there. So, and I was like, uh, that might be why, you know, your, your girl, Hathar, is called, uh, uh, you know, she's always called the mistress. You know what I'm saying? But, so, like I say, I'm finna, we finna build on that because I'm gonna show you how on point the brother is because Hathar is the cow goddess, right? Associated with the, with the horns. Remember, we, we, we digged into the horn goddess last time, right? And it said what? That um that this that uh let me see, hold on, let me get that for you. Okay, excuse me, y'all. So it say that Hathor is the female um aspect of it, you know what I'm saying? Being the pole, the the opening, the womb, the 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 cow goddess, the mother god. And then you have the masculine side, which is the horn god, right? Um, so let's dig into that, you know what I'm saying? Because she say that Horus is Ishmael, the child or the star, you feel what I'm saying, which is the sun, right? So when you go to the Horn God tab, remember we was building on this tab in the last um in the last video, right? And the Horn God represents the male part of the religion's dual uh dual theistic theological system, the other part being the female triple goddess or mother goddess, right? Mother goddess or cow goddess right the womb or the moon okay now remember what it said the wiccan god speaking of the horn god right in in, tra in traditional and mainstream wicca the horn god is viewed as the masculine side of divinity being both equal and opposite to the goddess right the wiccan god himself can be represented in many forms including as the sun god okay so bad right so going back to what the brother say, he say Hathor is Hagar and Horus is Ishmael. Okay, so we finna all oh, we finna dig into that. We finna go to Genesis right quick and dig on the story. Okay, before I do that, I just want to show y'all something real quick, just to show you how life is crazy when understanding us. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, Hathor is at times the mother, daughter, and wife of Ra. See what I'm saying? And like Isis is at times described as the mother of Horus. Okay, so see, she described as like the mother and 
the wife. So you see it's saying the counterparts as in duality, right? You got the husband and the wife, but then you also got this mother and son relationship, right? Hence, she's the house of Heru, right? Heru is housed in her, so, you know, probably in that womb, that moon, you know what I'm saying, was birth that, that sun god, you know what I'm saying, or however you want to look at it, but I just want to hit you with that, just to put that in perspective. All right, so we're going to... Uh, we're going to uh, build right here on uh, Genesis uh, chapter 16. We're going to read this chapter. Okay, and it says, uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah and Hagar. All right. Now Sarah, Abram's wife, bare him no children. She had a handmaid, an Egyptian. Right. Whose name was Hagar. And Sarah said unto Abram, Behold, now the Lord have restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my hand, uh, maid, uh, it may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarah, and, Ab and Sarah, uh, and Sarah, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian. Okay. After Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to be, um, gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived, and when she saw that she conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Oh. Okay. And Sarah said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee, I have given my maid into thy blossom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, uh, thy maid is in thy hand, do, do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarah dealt heartily with her, she fled uh, from her faith. And the angel of the Lord found her by the fountain of water uh, in the wilderness, right? That's important. Now, it's also important to note how the angel of the Lord is dealing with Hagar. Like, remember, Hagar is in distress. Even though she's Egyptian, the most I come to her aid for some reason. Now that's strange. Uh, or an angel of the Lord who's doing it by the command of the most high or by his own will or the command of somebody else. We don't know. But we can see divine intervention that dealing with Hagar for some strange reason. Okay. But we know why eventually because she is to give birth to uh, a son of another covenant. All right, and he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, um, whence comest thou, and and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my uh, mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress. All right, return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it may not be numbered for the multitude. For most two, right? Um, right. So you know, her son, her seed. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be it's multiplied. You know what I'm saying? And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. All right. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every. Uh, man's hand against him, and he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord and spake unto her. And she called the name of the Lord that spake unto her, the God that seeth me. For she said, Have I also here looked after me that seeth me? Okay. Whether for the whale was called Berlaharoi. All right, behold, it is between Kadesh and Barib. Okay, and Hagar bare um, Abram a son, and Abram's son, and Abram called his son's name Hagar bare Ishmael. Right, and Abram was uh, four score and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. All right, now check this out. All right, so we're going to jump over to Genesis 21 real quick. God protects Hagar and Ishmael, okay? The child, the child grew up and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, uh, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham mocking. Um, 
Wherefore she came to Ab wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be here with my son, even with Isaac, right? And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto her voice, for Isaac shall be thy seed, for Isaac shall thy seed be called, right? And, and also of thy son of the bondwoman will I make a nation, because he is thy seed, right? And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and took bread and a bottle of water, and gave it to Hagar, and put it on her shoulder, and the child, and sent her away. Um, and she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was uh, spent, and the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs, and under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat down against him a good way off, uh, as it were a blow, a bow shot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel called, and the angel of God called Hagar out of heaven, right? So he, he dealing with her again, right? And said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard thy voice of the lad where, where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation, right? And God opened her eyes and saw a well of water, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad a drink. Uh, and God said, with, and God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. Now this is very important, right? So he dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. Alright? And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. Okay, I think if I'm not mistaken, that should be around around this that area, that more Moab um Sinai area, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. And his mother took him a wife out of a land of Egypt. So even Ishmael's wife was Egyptian. His mother was Egyptian and his uh wife was Egyptian, right? Alright. So uh, let's go back to 16. So it's, it's something right there I want to point out. Okay. So remember what it said. Now he dwelt in the wilderness and he became an archer. Now what was also um, important from the verse, well from uh, 16, is this right here. Starting at 11. And shall uh, call his name Ishmael because the Lord have heard thy affliction right and then it says check out what it says in verse 12 and he sh and he will be a wild man Bam. and he will be a wild man and his hand will be against every man but check that out right there and he will be a wild man excuse me okay so we're making this um connection between Horus and Ishmael right this sun god in Ishmael, right? Or this horn god in Ishmael. Okay? Like uh like I said, right? The horn god, the wicked god himself can be re represented in many forms, including as the sun god. But now check this out. Also up here, right? Remember this? The wicked belief he, the horn god, is associated with nature, wilderness, right, sexuality. We got that part in the last video. And hunt. Now remember, Ishmael went into the wilderness. He dwelt in the wilderness. And he became an archer, right? So you got the horn god associated with nature and wilderness and hunting. Now check this out. Okay, the horn god is the personification of the life force energy in animals in the wild. Now remember, that life force energy, you know that's associated with Ra, right? Ra is also associated with Heru, right? Hold on, hold on, right here, I missed the, I missed the most important part. Say, for Wiccans, the horn god is the personification of the life force energy, right, associated with Ra, or Heru, and animals in the wild, and is associated with the wilderness, virility, 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 whatever that is, and the hunt, okay, so associated with wilderness and the hunt. Alright, I think this right here is going to hit and 
Just gonna what's gonna go ahead and knock it out the park. You feel me? Um, and bring it all together. Okay, so in psychology, right? That's you know, that's I feel is a important and accurate uh subtitle for this um for this tab right here. Okay, because check out what it says. Okay, I'm gonna just read. <clears throat> um, it says Sherry Salmon considers the image of the horn god in Jungian terms as an archetypal protector and mediator of the outside world to the objective psyche. In her theory, the male uh, psyche's horn god frequently compensates for inadequate fathering. Mm. Now, remember, right now we looking at this particular um correlation to be with Ishmael okay so think about that okay uh he say in her theory the male psyche horn god frequently compensates for inadequate fathering now check this out when first encountered the figure is a dangerous hairy chthonic wild man Possessed of kindness and intelligence. Okay, bam. I mean, that's what we want, right? Okay, humanistic uh, psychology. Following the work of Robert Bly in the uh, mythopoetic men's movement, John Rowan purposed the horn god as a wild man and shall call his name Ishmael. Because the Lord has heard thy affliction, and he will be a wild man. So as you can see, wild man was blue. You can click on wild man. It went to wild man. said the wild man also wild. Wild man, wild man of the woods. Wild man of the woods. Wood wolves is a myth, mythic figure that appears in artwork and literature of med uh, medieval Europe. Um, classic mythology, Roman God of the Woodland. Okay. There's a lot of stuff in here, man. We look at this, man. You know what I'm saying? Origins, up, up. Nebuchadnezzar, remember Nebuchadnezzar turned into, got up. Inky Do, and Ep Epic of Gilgamesh, and associated with this. But what we want is, um, it was something in interpretations, uh, right here. I'm gonna read this paragraph, right? It says, the, as the name implies, the key characteristics of the wild man is his wildness. Uh, civilized citizens are regarded as wild men as, uh, civilized citizens regarded wild men as beings of the wilderness. <clears throat> regarded wild men as beings of the wilderness. Let me see. What? And he will be a wild man and God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness okay so Civilized citizens regarded wild men as beings of the wilderness and as such represent the an antithesis of civilization. Uh, scholar Dorothy Yamamoto has noted that the wilderness uh, inhabited by the wild men does not truly indicate a place totally beyond human reach, but rather the liminal zones at the edge of civilization. Okay, that's important. A place inhabited by hunters, criminals, religious hermits, herdsmen, and other who frequent the margins of human activity. All right. Other characteristics develop and transmute in different contexts from earlier times are searches associated wild men with hairiness. By the 12th century, they were almost invariably uh, described as having a coat of hair covering their entire bodies except for their hands, feet, faces. Uh, above the long beards and the breast and chins of the females. Okay. Coming back, man, the, the, the connection that the brother
talk about right there, man, is definitely valid. You know, we can definitely see that. We can definitely see the sun god connection uh, with the horn god uh, and the wild man. You feel what I'm saying? Like We can see all that. What's even interesting and even deeper about it, you know what I'm saying, is um, it's like the brother say right here. It's Islam at its core, bro. Hathor pregnant with Horus and Hagar pregnant with Ishmael. Hagar was made great too. She made Ra though, right? Okay, so think about that. You know what I'm saying? She was made great too. Like I said, all the kings would come from her seed, you know what I'm saying, from her line, depending on this this particular covenant and covenant with Ishmael. Okay? Uh, but it seems like beef jealousy between Hagar and Sarah over Abraham. The inheritance goes to Isaac, feel me? It's been beef over the land. That's why uh Arabic Muslims think it's their land. Right? Um that's that's crazy, right? We're gonna we're gonna get into a little bit of that. Okay, remember this uh, video right here, the brother Lex put us on, we're going to dig. This is the dome of the rock. This is MapQuest. This is the Western United States. This is the Dome of the Rock. California, Oregon, and Washington. California, Oregon, and Washington. Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe. Right across there. The Rockies. The Rockies. The Dome of the Rock of King David it's supposed to be this region. The Muslims know this. So Hillary and Congressman Cummins were planning to dissolve the United States, bring in 100 million Muslims, and occupy this region. Why? Because it's the promised land promised to King David, according to the Dome of the Rock. So Cummings was part of a plan, along with Obama, to dissolve and destroy the United States to bring the Muslims in here to deny the Jews their promised land. This is very much this what is this it's because i believe that you know United States is being prepared to be split in two pieces, maybe three, but two, I believe, at the moment. One is going to be given to the, going to be given to Islam, to the Muslims. That's the piece you're looking at, the Western United States that has been purchased up by the federal government. It's being prepared to be handed over. The Eastern United States will be given to the Zionists. They will have control. On this map here, you can see the arrows pointing and the Muslims that, or you might say Islam, uh, have a working agreement, you might say, to split the United States at least into two parts. 
the eastern United States going to the Zionists? As you know, most of your Zionists uh, come out of Israel. And Israel, or excuse me, the Zionists, not the average Jew, but the Zionist Jew, and there are Zionist Christians and whatever they want to call themselves. But they're going to have the eastern United States and the promised land is the United States. It's not Israel. The promised land that they, that the 12 tribes of Israel were promised, they believe believe is the United States and this rock in the dome of the rock matching it exactly the western United Okay, so, you know what I'm saying, the connection that the brother making, man, is very valid. You know what I'm saying, it's very valid when you look at it. Because we can see the connection, right? Uh, You say, Hathar is Hagar and Horus is Ishmael. We can see the connection between the sun god, the horn god, right, who is a wild man. You know what I'm saying? So we can see that, right, who is the son of the mother goddess. You know what I'm saying? Or the mother of the gods, mother of the kings, however you want to look at it, right? The Muslim crescent moon and star. It's a womb, mother god is moon, right? <clears throat> and the or, or the counterpart to the sun deity and the child is the uh star or the sun, right? <clears throat> so what I want to do, just looking at that, I want to come back to this article. Because it's it's interesting what it says about his mother, right? Or however you want to look at it. <laughs> okay, so Hathar, right? She like we that thought she is the queen of the four corners of the universe right in the ancient goddess religion the cross is used often to point to the four corners of the universe all right so you know we're talking about horns and four corners and stuff like that okay uh but um uh, so scrolling up check it out it says as the cow goddess right she is the lady of the Holy Land. Wow, check that out. She is the lady of the Holy Land. Right? So, she's the lady and mistress of the Holy Land. The cow goddess. Right? The goddess of the four corners of the universe. Okay? She is the mother of Ishmael or the sun god. You see what I'm saying? He, therefore, is the inheritor. And we can see what Ishmael descendant are fighting for. The same area we finding that Hathor worship at, you know what I'm saying, and all that, all, all that other stuff, you know what I'm saying. Um, but you and you can see what you know. So like I said, Islam, biggest secret reveal, the Promised Land. So this is what they they claim to be their Promised Land, they Holy Land. You feel what I'm saying? In this Dome of the Rock, and this Dome of the Rock matching this Western part of the United States perfectly. You know that's just crazy. All right, man. So um, what I want to do is I want to um. <clears throat> come over here to uh, Galatians, but before I go to Galatians, uh, I gotta go back to Genesis 16. Um, just to help y'all understand one thing. Uh, so as you can see right here, the Egyptian whose name is Hagar, right? Uh, if you go to the Brent Septuagint, <clears throat> all right, the Egyptian maid whose name is Agar. So in some translation it says Agar, 
and some says Hagar. So when you see, you know, the Hagar, don't be confused or nothing like that. Understand, we're still talking about Hagar. All right, so we're going to go to uh, Galatians 4, uh, you know what I'm saying, and verse 21. Okay, so then what Paul says, the example of Hagar and Sarah, he said, Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law, do ye not hear the law? All right, good that question. All right, for it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a bondmaid and the other by a free woman. <clears throat> but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he who was of the free woman was by promise, which things are an allegory, for these are the two, the two covenants. The one from the Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar, all right? It says, for this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, okay? And answering to Jerusalem, which is now and is in bondage with her children. <clears throat> but Jerusalem, <clears throat> which is which above, which is above, excuse me, family. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is re uh, written, rejoice thou barren that bears not, break forth and cry, thou travailest, thou that travailest not. For the desolate have many more children than she which have a husband. Alright, now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of the promise. Alright, but as then he that was born after the flesh, we know he who was born after the flesh, because it said what? He who was born after, let's get it, real fast. So I ain't going to come back into it. He who was born of the bondman was born after the flesh, but he who was born of the free woman was born by the promise. Alright, so, but as then he that was born after the flesh, which was he that was born after the bondwoman, which was Ishmael, right, persecuted him that was born after the spirit, right, or the free woman, right, which was Isaac. So it's telling you right there, Ishmael persecuted Isaac, right, even so is it now. Wow. Okay, nevertheless, what says the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bond woman shall not be here with the son of the free woman. Alright? So then, brethren, we are not the children of the bond woman, but of the free. Alright? So, bam, you know what I'm saying? Catch that drop. As you can see, you know what I'm saying? That, that inheritance and that promise, you feel what I'm saying? It seems like people ain't understanding the difference. You feel what I'm saying? Between the covenant, like I say, uh, which things are an allegory for these are the two covenants. The one from Mount Sinai was gendered to bondage, which is Hagar. For this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. All right, so just take all that drop and filter it based upon, you know, what I'm going to bring out. <clears throat> all right, family, so we're going to go over here to these, uh, you know, checking out these four corner petroglyphs. We're going to end it on this, and I'm going to show you all a clip, right? Okay, so now what I want you all to do is look at these petroglyphs, right? Now, this right here is for the people who think that we reaching for looking at these petroglyphs and relating them to the worship of Hathor, right? And this Mount Sinai and uh, Moab Exodus story, right, that you find in the Bible. So, if you think we reaching by saying, you know what I'm saying, like, this right here could be referenced to Baal Peor, you know what I'm saying, the horned god, and this the portal, the lord of the opening, uh, the, the female counterpart. Uh, Hathor, right? That's the Milky Way ga uh, galaxy. Um, but so, like I say, this clip I'm finna show you is for you, man, for y'all who think I'm reaching. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with this Hathor, right? Remember what the brother say? He say, he say what? He say Hathor is Hagar, right? The verse say, for this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Okay? So, I'm going to play all this clip, right? It's called Exodus Golden Calf Altar Found in Arabia, right? The Golden Calf Altar was placed in Mount Sinai when, when, when Moses was taking too long on the mountain, right? So, like, like the verse say, Mount Sinai in Arabia. Uh, for this, Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Okay, you find in the Golden Calf Worship, which is the Hathor Worship. In Mount Sinai, in Arabia, right? So I'm going to play all that video. But like I say, what I want y'all to pay attention to, you know what I'm saying, is, is these petroglyphs right here that's in the four corners. That's in, you know what I'm saying, the territory that we 
We've been studying. We've been looking at right? Okay. So check out that. Okay, check out that. Check out the cattle. Look how they look. Look at the horns. Cattle. You feel what I'm saying? Remember, this is ranch land. Okay, you know that you know the hieroglyphs, you know you got the cross for the what? For the four corners, right? In between the, the Milky Way galaxy, the spirals, you know what I'm saying? We got the cattle, the bulls, right? Alright, so you know what I'm saying? Like I say, <clears throat> this video off in the play is for those of you who feel like uh or you might not be able to see that these what these petroglyphs are really talking about. You know what I'm saying? Look at the rock. Now what one thing I want you to look at too is the rocks, right? Look how they made. I right? see how it's dark up here in the light see where the petroglyphs at it is it, it tends to be dark okay now pay attention to that as I play this clip man because I can't I gotta mute my mic you feel what I'm saying so I ain't gonna be able to talk while I play it but you know I trust you you know what I'm saying y'all smart man y'all some scholars I love y'all so I'm finna I'm finna uh play this clip then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about it man because they finna hit you with the switcher brew the okie dokie hokey pokey everything you feel what I'm saying it's crazy I mean, like, when I come back and we build on this clip, you know what I'm saying, it just really don't make no sense. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to play that. Okay. Can't forget about that fair use. Got to get that fair use in there. Right? Right? Get that fair use in there. All right. Across the valley floor from the base of Mount Sinai lie the remarkably preserved remains of the altar to the golden calf. Once again, I was miraculously able to slip inside the fence undetected and record the images of cattle literally covering these rocks. These petroglyphs, or rock carvings, represent distinctly Egyptian gods, with Hathor be, being the female representation and Apis the male. These gods were actively worshipped in Egypt during the time that the Israelites were held captive there. The story is relayed to us in the 32nd chapter. record the images of cattle literally covering these rocks. These petroglyphs, or rock carvings, represent distinctly Egyptian gods, with Hathor be, being the female representation and Apis the male. These gods were actively worshipped in Egypt during the time that the Israelites were held captive there. The story is relayed to us in the 32nd chapter of Exodus, where the people grew restless waiting for Moses to return from the top of Mount Sinai. The people told Aaron, Up, make us gods to go before us. Aaron took their gold and fashioned for them a molten calf with a graving tool. What is intriguing about the story is that he fashioned a single idol, yet said, in sight of all of Israel, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. The scripture makes the same point later in the chapter when Aaron is explaining to what, what happened to Moses. He claims the people wanted gods to come before them. So he took their gold out, and out came a calf, once again singular. Looking at this site, however, the scripture becomes beautifully clear. Aaron prepared an altar to the idol, and then set the calf on the very top. The cattle you see here were carved right into the rocks upon which it sat. Standing back from the spectacle, one would have seen a golden calf sitting atop the rock carvings of Apis and Hathor, their former Egyptian gods. The calf, along with the images beneath it, would have been correctly spoken of as plural. These be thy gods, O Israel. It is noteworthy to mention that cattle have never been native to Saudi Arabia. These Egyptian gods carved in stone found here near the foot of the mountain 
surely give us yet another piece of evidence proving the certain truth of the Word of God. Oh! Now hold up. <laughs> Who do you people think they lied to, man? Huh? I mean, did, did, did they do it like that, fam? Huh? Did they... Did... Cool. Did, did, did they blow some of the walls off down there? Did, did, did it didn't transport them? You know what I'm saying? Across the way? Did they do it like that? Huh? That's what that's what that's what that said. You feel me? But I mean like for real though, man. <laughs> that's crazy to me. Hmm. Did did they did, I know they ain't hit us like that. I, I don't know, man. I'm just I'm that I'm just going a little crazy, man. Cause I know they ain't I know they ain't doing it like that. Like for real. But anyway, besides that, that should let you know what these hieroglyphs or these petroglyphs are talking about. You feel what I'm saying? It's not a miss or it's not out the way of reaching that we looking at these petroglyphs to explain that same story. Because they're doing the same thing with the same exact petroglyphs all the way in Arabia. And if you ask me, nigga, you know what I mean? Shit, well, I think they done blown, blew some of the pieces off the wall from the four corners. You feel what I'm saying? That's why I told you, look at the rock. Look how dark it is. Where the hieroglyphs at. You know what I'm saying? Then how light the other rock is. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, bro. I'm just saying. Like, I know they ain't playing with it like that now. You feel me? They done blew a whole slab off the wall. And then trans that joker to the very bit. I'm playing with that just to kind of make it fit prophecy or something. I don't know, fam. But y'all be the judge of that. <clears throat> I'm going to leave y'all with that. Um, I give all thanks and praying for this information, man, for this digging, um, you know, for this whole this whole piece to the puzzle, man, that, that we was able to, you know, come across, man. And like I say, man, y'all be the judge, man, huh? Is that what these petroglyphs is talking about? Is these petroglyphs talking about our, our Moses story? Yeah. I love y'all, fam. Y'all stay blessed. Shalom.